North Korea has accused the United States of flying spy planes over the country and threatened to shoot them down. That's according to a statement carried by the official KCNA news agency website on Monday, which quoted North Korea's Ministry of National Defense. The statement said that a plane flew into North Korean airspace, quote, dozens of kilometers over its East Sea several times, adding, quote, there is no guarantee that such a shocking accident as the downing of the U.S. Air Force strategic reconnaissance plane will not happen. South Korea's military said North Korea's claim of airspace violation was false. U.S. air surveillance assets conduct routine reconnaissance flights around the Korean Peninsula, and North Korea's claim of airspace violation is not true. We strongly urge the North to immediately stop creating tension with these false claims. The North Korean statement said the provocative military actions by the U.S. were bringing the Korean Peninsula closer to a nuclear conflict. Last month, an American nuclear-powered cruise missile submarine made a port call at Busan in South Korea. That came amid air and navy drills being conducted by U.S. and South Korean forces, also involving a U.S. aircraft carrier and heavy bombers. Less than two weeks ago, North Korea held mass rallies in Pyongyang showing posters with missiles hitting the United States. Those mark the 73rd anniversary of the start of the Korean War. State-run television KRT said people were heard shouting slogans, vowing a, quote, war of revenge. The rallies were held amid concerns Pyongyang could soon conduct another launch of its first military spy satellite to boost monitoring of U.S. military activities. That's after its first attempt ended in failure at the end of May. Email exchanges from inside the BBC, they talk about the risk of violating Indian laws. It's easier to rake up the freedom of speech debate but does it give anyone a free pass to knowingly violate the law? America supports India because it needs India's support in return. And India is working with the US because it suits India's interests. This is how geopolitics works. Last night, he diffused a crisis with his defense minister. But today, Netanyahu was confronted with a new problem. His cabinet seems to have rebelled against him. UK is looking at the Indian subcontinent to fill its coffers. That India seems to be negotiating from a position of power, like a partner and not a former colony. The US and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one. The Kohinoor and the Colonial Loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting.